Um, our text this morning is uh, coming out of Genesis 128. Mm. It's a very, very familiar passage of scripture. And it says, Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Father, I thank you for this word that you've given for your people this morning. I thank you for their hearts being and their spiritual hearts and ears and eyes being open to hear and to experience what it is that you are trying to say to them this morning. Father, I thank you for your sweet spirit in this house. Thank you. Father, I ask that uh, the people not see me, but see what you are trying to say through your servant this morning that you be uplifted and you be glorified in this place. So, Father, we praise you, we honor you, we glorify you, we magnify your holy name. And it's in the matchless name of Jesus Christ we pray. And all the saints say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Y'all know uh, we live in a we live in a culture that's built on hyper consumerism, right? Yeah. I mean, we just came out of Christmas season. It's pretty evident. Even during a, a global pandemic and all of the madness going on surrounding that, they still trying to get us to buy and buy and buy and buy and buy. We've mastered the art of convincing ourselves that no matter what we do, we're never good enough. We never have enough. We're not wealthy enough. We're not healthy enough. We're not attractive enough. We're not smart enough. We ain't cool enough. So it's easy for them to try to constantly sell us stuff, right? I mean, even in the body of Christ, we ain't saved enough. Yes. You ever have somebody ask you that when, you, when they find out you're a believer? Mm-hmm. Are you saved? But are you saved, saved? <laughs> like, what level of saved? <laughs> oh, man. So in our culture, um, it's nearly impossible to escape the constant reminders of our inadequacies. And we all have something, right? I mean, let's be honest. We all have some area in our lives lives where we feel somewhat inadequate. And there's always somebody looking to sell you something to fill that hole. Right? We think we can buy our way into measuring up. You know, um, one of the things that kind of helps me to deal with that is knowing that um, when God created this universe, you have to understand, you know, I know I've said this before, but the creative genius that it takes to go from absolute nothingness when there's nothing but God there's no empty space so people have this idea in their heads that in the beginning there was empty space no there was no space there was only God you know the scientific community tries to say that uh, there was a big bang you know um, and some of them try to use that as some type of some type of evidence that God doesn't exist. But there had to be some material to bang. Yes. So where did that come from? So you can't get around the existence of the uncaused first cause. We know him as Jesus. 
He's the uncaused first cause, meaning he is eternal. And when he created the universe, This whole thing was put together for us. You gotta understand, the universe is still expanding. That's a scientific fact. It's vast, it's still expanding. And he put our planet in this galaxy, surrounded by other galaxies, surrounded by billions and billions of other galaxies, and he set this thing up so that we could exist and thrive. The whole thing is set up so that we live. You have to get your, that's love. The first act of love was setting this whole thing in motion for us. How, how much worth must you have for God to do such a thing? to set all of this up so that life could exist right here on this planet and so that you can thrive. See, when you begin to understand that, it becomes harder and harder for people to sell you on the fact that you ain't good enough. You begin to understand that you are literally living the blessing. That's the title of our message today. Living the blessing. Yes. So what is a blessing? Let's talk about that for a second. A blessing in its verb form is the act or words of a person who blesses. It's a special favor or mercy or benefit it's a favor or gift bestowed by God, thereby bringing happiness. The invoking of God's favor upon a person. Praise, devotion, worship, especially grace said before a meal or approval or good wishes. You see, Adam had all the blessings he would ever need from the moment that God breathed life into him. The fall of man when he fell in the Garden of Eden led to the led, led to that fact being obscured. The blessings became obscured to man due to the fall. Fallen man does everything he can to prevent other men from recognizing the blessings before them. He wants to sell you blessings that are already yours. Wow. Jesus. That's good. You got to understand, God did not ever create a species for which he did not make provisions for it to be able to thrive. God is not up in heaven running a science experiment. So from the smallest single cell organism all the way up to the largest animal on earth, I think it's the blue whale, he made provisions so that each and every one of us, or each and every one of these things can survive and thrive. That's love. Yes. That's every single one of them has been blessed beyond measure. They have everything they need to survive right now. Amen. If you look at our bodies the way uh, the creative genius just in the human form the way our eyes operate, the way our ears operate, the way we can, uh, God set up the, the, the air on our planet mm -hmm. so that, you know, our praise and worship team can make sounds and they vibrate in the air a certain way and they're pleasing to our ears. The creative genius behind that. Wow. The fact that we even have sense enough to create a wheel. Wow. See, we, we take that stuff for granted. Sure. How many orangutans you see out there making wheels? <laughs> the earth, the gravity that we take for granted. Mm -hmm. Take it away and see what happened to you. Right. How many of y'all want to fly off into space? <laughs> <laughs> mm 
This is all through the creative genius of our great and mighty God. He could have put us here and said, I wonder what would happen. I'm going to put some people on, I'm going to put some animals on this earth, and I'm just going to take away the gravity, gravity and just have a laugh. No. The distance that we are from the, the sun, the distance that the moon is from the earth, all of this is a blessing from God. The moon, the distance that it's at, turns up our seas. Bringing food for the animals, all these little animals that we take for granted, this whole ecosystem exists because of things that we completely and totally take for granted. Wow. You take a couple of things out and we would perish. Mm -hmm. It was all set up for us by God. Yeah. He has blessed us infinitely. Wow. Mm. If you look at the, uh, the pandemic, there's some weird stuff going on. Uh, the supply chain, um, I'm sure some of y'all have noticed. You go to the grocery store, and the shelves looking barren. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The distribution and supply chains have been affected by the pandemic. We just don't have the manpower in the system right now to feed people or to bring the goods to these stores the way we used to. So what would happen if it completely collapsed? Wow. What if you couldn't go to, what if Amazon and all these other delivery companies couldn't even deliver the food to you? Some of y'all will be balled up in the corner in a fetal position crying yes. every single day. But the fact that, the fact is, before there was a distribution and supply chain, people still ate. Yeah, sure did. Yeah, that's right. Yep. See, we act like if all this stuff gets taken away, then our blessings have been taken away. Mm -hmm. God already blessed you with everything you need to survive. Yes, sure From the moment the first man was on, his, on this planet, yes. he had everything he needed. Yes, that's true. We're spoiled. It ain't God's fault that you don't know how to start a fire. <laughs> it ain't God's fault that you don't know how to farm. Mm -hmm. You don't know how to plant. Wow. It ain't God's fault that you're scared to kill and skin an animal yes. and eat it. Yes. It's not God's fault that you don't know how to fish. Right. Right. <clears throat> He's given each and every one of us everything we will possibly need to survive. And we're so spoiled that we don't even know that we are living the blessing every single day. Amen. Look around you. Just look at this room. The textiles in the carpet. The fact that we have the ability to go into the earth and, 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 and get the oil and, and refine the oil so that we can create textiles to even make carpet. To make this little cheap plastic stuff. The fact that we even have a mind that can do that is a blessing from God. Mm -hmm. The fact that we even know how to make pigments so that the, the, the ceiling can be red, it's all a blessing. The fact that we even know how to um, take some of this food and process it and package it and all that stuff, mm -hmm. it's a blessing. You are literally living a blessing right now, and most people don't even know it. If this whole monetary system collapsed, God did not create the monetary system. He could take that whole thing away. If God came here and flattened all these buildings, took away all of our roads, took away everything, all these modern conveniences, y'all would think it was the work of the devil. <laughs> devil trying to kill us. <laughs> this is it. There's plenty of trees around here. Do you know how to chop? Do you know how to chop down a tree, strip off the bark, turn it into planks, turn it into a house? Is that God's fault that you don't know how to do that? No. It 
Is it God's fault that you don't know how to take mud and make a, an oven out of it to heat your food and cook for your family? No, it's not his fault. We're spoiled. And look, I never chopped wood in my life. So I ain't trying to judge anybody. I'm right there with you. I ain't never cut down a tree. I ain't never picked up an ax to even swing it at a tree. So I'm not here to judge anybody. I'll be right there in a fetal, in a fetal position with some of y'all. But I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> so the fall of man is what led to this system that we live in. We've created this chase for money for our, our survival. We created that. God did not create that. You can take this whole system away and we will still be completely and totally blessed. Yes. Wow. Everything, all of it. Yes. Wow. You know, we had a song, uh, take everything. That's what I think about. I don't know what y'all be thinking about. Like, Lord, <laughs> take this whole thing. I don't want it. Exactly. You can take all this stuff. Yeah, wow. That's good. I just want you. Yes. And I would still have you without all this. Because yes. wow. I, know, I know somebody around here know I have a chop wood. Yes. <laughs> You know, that's what community is for. Come on. <laughs> I may not know how to shoot a bow and arrow or even make one, but I know I got some brothers and sisters around here yes, that will Lord. figure it out. Yes, yes, People in this house saying we finna let each other go hungry. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Um So I want you all to really think about that this week as we're fasting. I want you to think about, think outside, uh, literally start to think outside of the box about what a blessing actually is. You know, because so many of us think that we're just looking for material blessings, a lot of us. You know, we're looking for uh, to be blessed with a promotion at, at work or, you know, looking for our children to be blessed at school and all these different types of blessings. And we've, we don't even recognize the blessings that are right before us. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you look, every, literally everywhere you look, there are blessings. Every material that God put on this earth to mm. make this life that we live now is a blessing. Yes. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Yes, Lord. And we get to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Find me a cheater that can make a camera. <laughs> That's love. Wow. Now, there are other blessings in the Bible that are conditional. Um, they're based on your obedience. Mm. There are, you know, he's already blessed us with all this earth, all these materials, but there are other blessings that are based on your obedience. Mm, wow. Let's take a look at Isaiah 58, 6 through 11. It says, is this not the fast that I have chosen? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Guess what we're doing this week? Yes. And look at what it says next. To loose the bonds of wickedness, wow. to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free. Wow. And that you break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out? When you see the naked, that you cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh. Then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard and you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. 
If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and speaking wicked, wickedness, if you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness and your darkness shall be as noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a water garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. And that's just from fasting. Wow. If you follow his commandment to fast, Jesus said in the New Testament when he was talking about um, trying to tell people how to fast, one of the most important things he said was when you fast, mm -hmm. not if, wow. when you fast. Mm -hmm. So it's very clear that Jesus expects us to fast. Yes. Right. So a lot of you, like myself, who haven't been fasting as much as you should. <laughs> this is a commandment from Jesus himself. It is expected that people that follow him will fast. Amen. He also said, when you pray, pray like this. Right. He expects us to fast and pray. Right. It's not an option. So all these promises come just out of fasting. There's so many promises in the Bible, but just if you obey that one thing, mm -hmm. look at what he promises you. Wow. That's really good. <laughs> Can't buy a hallelujah in this place. <laughs> <laughs> and all you got to do is fast. Right. Glory to God. We got more promises in Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 10. Number one, the first promise that God gives in Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 10 is prominence above other nations. Wow. He says, now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Thank you, Jesus. The second one is successful cities and farming. Wow. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. The next is blessings of children, food, and livestock. Blessed shall, he be, blessed shall be the fruit of your body or your offspring, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in. Blessed shall you be when you go out. The next one is protection against your enemies. The Lord will cause your enemies to rise against you, who rise against you, to be defeated before your face. Wow. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. Wow. Mm -hmm. The next one is a bountiful harvest. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouse and all to which you set your hand. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God has given you. This is all from obeying his commands. Mm -hmm. yes. The next one is you will be set apart as God's holy people. The Lord God will, the Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to you. If you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, then all peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you. Wow. Wow. But there are curses on disobedience mm -hmm. that are just as important. Yes. 
Verse 15 says, but it shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today, that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. Number one, wow. curse shall you be in the city and curse shall you be in the country. Wow. Curse shall you be in your basket and your kneading bowl. Curse shall be the fruit of your body and the produce of your land, the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flock. Cursed shall you be when you come, and cursed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will send you cursing, confusion, and rebuke in all that you set your hand to do until you are destroyed and until you perish quickly. Because, the wicked, because of the wickedness of your doings in which you have forsaken me. Now, here's where it gets real serious. The Lord will make the plague... Cling to you until he has consumed you from the land in which you are going to possess. The Lord will strike you with consumption, with fever, with inflammation, and with severe burning fever. Does that sound like anything we're going through today? Could it be that due to our disobedience, could it be? That's why we're in a time where we cannot afford, as, as the body of Christ, to be playing around. Amen. Because the word says right here, because of your disobedience, he will send the plague. Mm. Trust me, I've had the fever. <laughs> I've had the inflammation and the, the severe burning fever. It's not fun. I don't recommend it. And we see this thing sweeping all around our planet, and we still playing. Come on. Come on. We can't even agree on anything in the body of Christ alone. You would think at some point we would wise up and come together on the things that we can agree on the most, instead of all these doctrinal differences and all these denominational differences. We can't be playing, y'all. Time is up. Yes. The, Lord is, the Lord is making his move mm -hmm. due to our disobedience. Wow. Wow. Last week it was what? Uh, Omicron. Omicron. <laughs> then it's flu -rona. <laughs> now it's Delta Cron. I think it's Delta Cron they came out with. And all he asks is that we obey his commands. Right. He has blessed us infinitely with everything that we will ever need to exist. And he just asks that you do what he tells you to do. Right. <laughs> Obey his commands. Mm -hmm. You want to prosper? Obey. Amen. Let's take a look at Genesis 126 through 128. Through 28, rather. 126 through 28. I'm almost done, y'all. All right, Genesis uh, 121, 26 through 28 says, Then God said, Let us make man in our own, in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and every other, and every, and over every creeping thing, creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, 
and over every living, living thing that moves on the earth. Mm. Now, this passage of scripture is one of the most important passages in the entire Bible, and it's not just because of what it says, but also because of what it does not say. Um, Y'all know what a noun is, right? Okay, some of y'all paid attention. <laughs> Persons, places, or things, people, places, and things. So we know in our language, we know in language an important distinction, it makes it, we make an important distinction between people, places, and things, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now if you look back on verse 28, then God blessed them and said to them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on earth. Now, notice it doesn't say anything about God giving man dominion over man. You see, dominion over man is reserved for God. Now, what does dominion mean? Dominion comes from medieval Latin. Uh, it's a word, I think it's pronounced dominionum, which means property or ownership. Um, from like the middle of the 15th century, it began to mean lordship, sovereign or supreme authority. Lordship, sovereign or supreme authority. Now, the problem that we have right now, how we got, a, got to a place of obedience in the church, this is just one, is in the body of Christ, we got too many leaders who are thirsty for dominion over people. Mm. Now, um, Hebrews 13, 17 says, obey your leaders mm -hmm. and submit to them for they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will have to, have to give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. See, there's a difference between watching over the souls of your congregants and having dominion over them, right. and them being your property, or you having lordship, or sovereign and supreme authority over them. Wow. But y'all gotta do y'all part too. Don't be groaning and uh, causing all kind of division in your church. Wow. <laughs> that's, why we, that's why deliverance is so important. Mm -hmm. So y'all don't be running around church trying to... I ain't gonna say it. <laughs> I ain't gonna say it. Just be, keep your clothes on. Because we've been in ministries where that was a problem. Yes. And that's, 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 church leaders don't want to have to deal with that. Come on. We have to deal with the fact that y'all, uh, you and your, your husband and wife, y'all at each other's throats. Mm -hmm. Because y'all will not submit or obey what the word is trying to tell you about marriage. Wow. Right. And the word has something to say about marriage. Or your kids run around because you won't whoop them. <laughs> you won't discipline them. They at school slapping folks and cussing out teachers. <laughs> bringing home straight Fs. And you bring them to church and you expect us to make it all better. <laughs> Ministry starts in your home. Don't bring them to profit. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> so, you know, we have a twisted view of leadership. Just a twisted view of what leadership actually is, you know, true leadership. You know? You know, many of the leaders we see in the church today, they're Nothing more than master manipulators. Amen. That's what they're really good at. 
Oh, they can give a good, they can give a good sermon and, you know, they can preach, preach. They can do all that. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, come on now. <laughs> they are master manipulators. Mm -hmm. They know how to manipulate your emotions. Yes. Mm -hmm. They can look at the problem, like you go to them with the problems that you're having and they will take those problems and begin to manipulate you to get something from you that they want. Wow. Witchery. It's witchcraft. It is. it is. And there's a lot of them. Yes. Amen. Amen. But the problem is, we don't know what true leadership looks like, so that's why they get away with it. Yes. Hey. Wow. Now, why is this? You know, I, you know, a lot of them, I don't think they got into ministry to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't think they woke up one day and said, you know what, some of them do, though. Yeah. They didn't wake up one day and say, you know what, I'm going to be a pastor because I just want to manipulate people and I want to be able to just do whatever I want to do. I want to take the money. I want to be able to chase after their wives and their daughters and or so, do what, whatever it is that they do. I just want to be famous. I think a lot of them themselves have been the victims of manipulation by people in positions of leadership for so long that they don't know how to lead without it. Wow. Wow. They don't know how to lead without manipulating people. Mm -hmm. You know, slavery is one of the most manipulative relationships in human history, right? I think we can all agree on that. Look at what Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 10, 16 says. It says, woe to the land whose king was a servant or a slave. Woe to the land whose king was a servant or a slave. Why? Wow. Because they tend to lead in childish, manipulative ways. Wow. Wow. And the body of Christ has too many leaders with a slave mentality. Wow. They're interested in two things, pleasure, which ultimately is the exalting of the self above Jesus, mm -hmm. and power. Mm -hmm. True leadership is not about power, but empowerment, yes. which takes us back to the blessings. Mm -hmm. in, the blessing, in the blessings in that first chapter of Genesis, what God did was he empowered Man with leadership by giving us dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the, over the cattle, and every living thing that moves on the earth. Come on now. But not over what? People. Exactly. Not over man. Yes. Good. Tell your neighbor, not over man. Not over man. <laughs> Help me out, Casey. <laughs> You know what, y'all can stand. So, um, Deuteronomy 28, 13. It says, and the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. Mm -hmm. You shall be above only and not be beneath. If you need the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command to you today... If you heed the, the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command to you today, and are careful to observe them. We cherish this, this scripture as Christians, and we should. Have you ever seen a dog, like uh, one of those little, those little tiny ones, that uh, they get excited and they wag their tail so hard, their whole body starts to move, you know? They get excited, and they, they just... Tag, the, that tail starts wagging and everything just <laughs> see that's the problem we have in our society we're supposed to be the leaders the head but the tail is wagging the dog wow. mm. Mm. 
we walk around like we have all the answers to the to what ails society and yet we still got people in these schools teaching our children that they can choose whatever gender they want to be my god And we just see this, and they, they're making it very, very much normal. Mm -hmm. When it's a mental illness, it's mental. It's spiritual. Yes. How are you going to let a three-year-old tell you what gender they want to be? they still trying to stick a fork in the socket. <laughs> <laughs> they, can't make, they can't vote. They can't go to war. They can't drink. They can't do anything else legally. But you're going to let them decide what their gender is. <laughs> What kind of sense does that make? Wow. See, this is what happens when the tail wags the dog. Wow. Mm. You have a small vocal minority mm. making all the decisions. Wow. This is why we have so many abortion clinics. The tail is wagging the dog. Mm. Because the leadership in the body of Christ is fractured. We got 275,000 different de denominations. Everybody want to be the chief. <laughs> this is how they're able to do this. Yeah. True kingdom leadership encourages Christians to think about their vision for the society they want to live in mm -hmm. based on their faith. Yes. But we're so concerned about being canceled you know, we live in this cancel culture. It, it scares Christians into silence because mm. we don't want to get canceled. Let me tell you something. <laughs> you were already canceled in Satan's kingdom when you gave your life to Christ. Mm. <laughs> You've been canceled. <laughs> <laughs> what can man possibly do to you? Come on. Now, will we suffer for standing up for a vision of the world based on kingdom principles? Will we? Yes. But look at what 1 Peter 5.10 says. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Wow. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Wow. And all the saints say, Amen. 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 He's the God of all grace. Not grace from just in the time of the Bible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 2,000 years ago, 4,000 years ago, he's the God of all grace. Yesterday's grace, today's grace, and future grace. My wife was all up in my message. I meant to tell y'all that. Mm -hmm. But listen, for, for this kind of a vision of the world we live in based on our faith, for this to become a reality, we need Christians to step up and speak out. Yes. You gotta be intentional about making a difference. We can't just be passive. We've been passive too long. Yeah. We, we complain about all this corruption in government, but we're not, we're not getting together in groups and in, in mass and make, try, literally trying to make a difference. We see all these communities all around us. Like me, me and my wife, we live in Southwest Atlanta. Who knows anything about Southwest Atlanta? Child. Child. Child, yeah. The trenches. It's the trenches. <laughs> we hear our fair share of gunshots. Mm. Mm. We hear our fair share of sirens and helicopters flying overhead. We see our fair share of people who are street walkers who had a uh, uh, an overdose 20 years ago and were never the same and all they know how to do is walk the streets but at the end of our street right across the street from each other there's two churches there's a church right on the corner of our street it's churches all up and down the main street where we live Yet, the despair is so thick. Mm. Mm. Just like here in this community. My wife used to work, um, I probably shouldn't ask y'all to stand up yet. 
Y'all be alright. Y'all young. Um, she used to work in, with an organization that um, tried to get drug addict, uh, drug addicted mothers whose children had been taken um, into, uh, you know, had been had to deal with the state and all that. Tried to get them hooked up with people in the local churches. And she went into some places that she's told me about that I was like, if I had known, and it was right here in this community, if I had known that you was about to run up in there, I would have told you to quit a long time ago. So it's not just Southwest Atlanta. Right. But the churches around here got good money. Mm -hmm. They have several resources. Mm -hmm. So why is the despair so thick? What do you think it is? It's a dearth of leadership, mm. true leadership. Mm. People that truly want to make a difference in their communities. Right. How long are we going to let this go on, y'all? Right. Every single person in here right now is a leader somewhere in your life. Mm -hmm. Churches are full of people that are influencers. In some arena. They're trustees, they're business people, stay at home parents, bloggers, pod podcasters, teachers, shop owners, shift managers, campaigners. The list goes on and on and on. We all over the place. You would think we would have more influence over this society and live over our towns, our villages, our cities, our states, our countries. But we need true leaders. And every single person in here has the ability to be a true leader. Not one of these master manipulators. Amen. Amen. We can't operate in a vacuum. You have to work with others and support them in their leadership, work with other ministries, work with other churches, not just here, but outside of our state. We have to think bigger. Mm -hmm. We got to, we, you know, a lot of us just think we, we just have this small little ecosystem of faith that we try to stay connected to. We got to start to think bigger. Mm -hmm. God, we, we serve a big God. Yes, Lord. It's important to have a, a support network. People who can pray in difficult times, offer guidance from their own experiences and understand that when you fall short of your expectations and encourage you to take risks mm -hmm. and to step out on faith. Amen. How many risk takers we got in here? How many of y'all really have the courage to step out on faith and take a risk to advance the kingdom of God here on earth? Man, I wish I could have got a show of hands. <laughs> Amen. Wow. Amen. That's all we got? Can I get a hand clap? Thank you, Lex. <laughs> Lord have mercy of me. <laughs> Can't get no help. So the problem is, you know, often we don't recognize the, uh, the leadership roles that we actually have. Like everywhere you go, even on your job, you you have to understand that in the body of Christ, even though they may not recognize you as a leader at your job, you're a leader in the body of Christ. Mm, that's good. So you have a you have a responsibility and a role to play by changing the environment or the atmosphere based on the way you carry yourself, the way you, you react to things in your office, the way you react to people, the way you serve. Amen. If you just like everybody else in your office is cussing folks out, that's complaining all the time, that's showing up late, that's halfway doing their jobs, you're not cut out for leadership. You got to grow up. Amen. It's time to mature. Why are we not seeing this now? I think people don't understand that they themselves are part of God's blessing. Mm. 
See, every single one of you is a piece of creation. Just like the earth and everything in it. Mm -hmm. You're a part of that. Look at your neighbor and tell them, you're a blessing. You're a blessing. Each and every person in here is a blessing. Amen. Wow. Stop listening to what the world is trying to tell you so they can sell you things. Because that's all they want to do. But God made you a blessing first. You're not a blessing because of what you have or the position that you have or the gifting you have. You're, you're a blessing because God has put you here to be a solution to a problem. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. All you got to do is wake up and recognize it. Amen? Amen. So as we, uh, as we go through this week and uh, this week of fasting, I think me and my wife might fast a little bit longer. What you think, babe? Amen. <laughs> I'm putting her on the spot. I mean, I get a Lord. Yeah, I'm with you. All right, love you, darling. <laughs> so, um, I want y'all to think about that. I want you to begin to see yourselves in a different light. I don't care what you've been through, or I don't care what how these people are treating you on your job. I don't care how they're treating you and your family. I want you to begin to see yourself for what you are. You're a blessing. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. And in your prayer time this week, ask the Lord to reveal to you those areas where you have influence, where that blessing that's in you can begin to manifest itself and truly make a difference. Amen. Come on now. Come on. All right. That's all I got. Thank you. Yay.